And as an example I gave, so I am a, the UK medicines regulator is called the MHRA. It's the regulatory body like the FDA in the US. And they have a series of committees of external experts. And one of them is a pharmacovigilance committee, which I'm a member of. So every time a risk management plan is written, people like me look through the risk management plan and decide, based on the safety specification, does this risk management plan look reasonable? Or if the company says, we cannot do a study, it's impossible, I could decide, I don't believe, I think it is possible. So we would go back to the company and say, we disagree with you, we insist that you propose a study. And we could give them an example of what the study should be, but we can insist that they have to propose something different as part of the license. And this is uh, something that happened quite recently in drug regulation was that the authorities could refuse a license unless a commitment was made to do these kinds of studies. Okay? Right, so we're going to quickly recap on risk management and then I'm going to go through several examples of where electronic health records are used for pharmaceutical research and why we would use them, how we make the best use of them and what kinds of questions they can answer. And these are all real life examples where they've been used. Okay, so just to quickly recap, so the risk management plan has the safety specification which tells us what we already know, what we already know. So who's been studied, who hasn't been studied, how well does the treatment work, and what are the safety issues we already know. The summary of what we don't know, so the people that were not studied, any uncertainties we have about safety, so rare effects, long-term effects, anything we don't know about real-world effectiveness of the treatment, and then essentially how the drug will be used in the real world. What doses will be used? Will it be used off-label? So for unintended indications, that sort of thing. So that's the summary of what we already know and what we don't know. And then remember the pharmacovigilance plan is where we say how we will address what we don't know. So how we will investigate safety outcomes further. And the risk minimization plan is how we will minimize those risks in future use, okay? So I'm going to go through a series of examples now which are opportunities where electronic health records can be really helpful for studying these various types of things. So we've, we're going to look at investigating known risks, uh, potential risks, filling gaps in our information. We can look at investigating effectiveness versus efficacy. We can also do randomized trials using the electronic health records. And these could be both pragmatic trials, but also trials where we use historic controls. And we can certainly use electronic health records to determine how well risk minimization is working. So these are all the various things that we can use EHRs to do. Now, one thing about terminology, I think it can be very confusing in the world that we work in today where things get used a little bit interchangeably. So you'll hear people talk about real world evidence, real world data, routine care, non-randomized evidence, or big data. And lots of these will get used interchangeably. They're a little bit like a Venn diagram where sometimes they involve each other, sometimes they don't involve each other. All I'm gonna say is don't, don't worry too much about these terms. They're br broadly speaking, while I'm talking to you, I would say real world data is data that's obtained during normal or routine clinical care. And that may well be stored 
electronically in large quantities that then becomes big data, okay? But don't worry too much about that kind of thing. That's the data. The evidence is what we might then generate using that data. So when we do a study and we produce a result and a conclusion, that's the evidence, okay? So real world evidence. Hopefully you realize from the first talk that because of this formal risk management process for medications, there's now a, a legally enforceable way of making sure that we generate evidence about what drugs are doing in the real world, okay? So if we're gonna do this kind of research about real world effects of treatments, where will we get the data from? Well, there are, there are lots of different ways we could get the data. They're all related to how the drug is used in routine care and you could get it from primary collection. So you could go to individual hospitals and get the records <coughs> of patients and do studies. People do this. It's very resource intensive. It can be very expensive and will usually mean you can only study a fairly small number of patients. Uh, we can have registries and there are some great examples usually related to a specific disease. So for example there's a rheumatoid arthritis register where all the patients taking the new treatments for those developed disease are all registered. But the two that I'm particularly interested in because they're becoming used more and more are your medical insurance databases and the electronic health records. It's also the kind of data that I use for my research.